Good. Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome you to the final pitch of uh, this first edition of Impact Days of One World, which is our new industry program. My name is Eva Kriškova. I'm an executive director of the festival. And uh, maybe as a first thing, I would like to briefly uh, explain what Impact Days mean, as it's not very usual in, uh, in our area. Uh, the, I think the difference between uh, like traditional uh, industry days and impact days is that we are not preparing our participants uh, to make up projects for the A festivals, but we are rather uh, trying to help them prepare campaign for the documentaries which would, would support them in their goal to, to make some social change in uh, their own country, uh, preferably. So uh, our participants, our three uh, filmmaker groups were working on their impact campaigns for two days now with their tutors and they are going to present what they managed to prepare. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to uh, introduce our jury because there is also jury with us who will at the end decide which of the three projects made, made the, the biggest approach and which one has the biggest change to, to reach some social change. So there is Marche de Koenig with us from Netherlands and Marche is an artistic director of movies that matter. Maybe Marche, you can uh, show us your face and, and wave. This is me. Yeah, hi from the Netherlands. But actually now in Bratislava. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Marche is here with us. She also had the presentation and the discussion live in Goethe Institute uh, two days ago. There is also uh, Zuska Bing with us, ex-director of the organization Fair Play Alliance, analyst since 2019. She is head of Civic Association Bistrini, which organizes, among the other things, the White Crow Award. Zuzi, welcome. Thank you for participating in the jury. And Alex, sorry, how can you... Alexandra Polakova Suchalova from Slovakia is a researcher from Institute of Public Policy. And Alexandra is also doing a research during this industry program on the potential social impact of this program. So welcome and thank you, the jury. And now I would like to give the word to the first project uh, of Maciej Sotnik and Paula Djurinova called It's Not Your Fault. So uh, I think it will be you, Matej, who will present your project. So the, the floor is yours. Um, uh, ah, yeah, uh, so hello, everybody. Again, after a very challenging workshop, amazing meetings, and uh, so many inputs that you gave us uh, and to our project. Thank you to all the tutors and for sure to One World Slovakia for organizing this. My name is Matej Sotnik, I'm the producer of the film, and here with me is Paula Durinova, director of the film. Hi, Paula. Uh, Paula did not attend the platform personally, but we are very closely collaborating as uh, professionals, but also as friends, as this atmosphere is in the whole team and the whole process, which is very important for us. With this film, we had uh, long discussions about final image of our future impact campaign that we are very pleased to present to you. Uh, but uh, now I would like to give a word to Paula, who uh, shortly tell you about her personal motivation to actually make this film as her first feature documentary. And uh, this motivation, which certainly has something to do with the political context and impact of our film, it's not your fault. So Paula, maybe please say uh, some words. <laughs> Hi, um, <clears throat> thank you so much for having us here and thank you much for the... Nice introduction. Um, yeah, this film is, it has two layers for me and one is very personal and the second one is political, but they are both embedded, I would say. Uh, um, the inspiration for the film comes from my personal experience of um, basically functioning with anxiety since I can remember. And uh, at some point it led to a burnout where I realized, okay, I wanna look um, at my perspective from a more, for a bigger picture from a context and maybe see why is this happening. And then um, in sharing with others, I realized there are many people in, in our generation who actually got to this point in, in my generation. 
And it made me feel of this experience not being a personal, but actually something maybe like a symptom of a time um, that we live in. And the world development and the process of the film is also reflecting basically this journey that I went through, but it's also reflected in the story of the film. And um, I decided to research different radical strategies and approaches and artistic uh, practices that actually deal with the topic of um, widespread anxiety in the society or the symptom of the society that we live in, which is mostly triggered by the high pressure and the value of the person, which is only based on our achievements and the failures we are said to be like we should keep it to ourselves uh, and deal with them to ourselves. And that's maybe also like the, the title of the film, It's Not Your Fault, is in aligning to this when we are trying to shift the perspective of individual uh, to the societal. And um, because one of the big inspirations for me as well uh, for, for the project was the essay of Mark Fisher, where he basically says the personalization of mental health problems leads to pathology. And then it's just individualized and we don't deal with it. We deal with it only ourselves, which means we keep it in silence. Um, so this is the big inspiration for the film and it hopes to propose strategies where we can actually share together and address this problem that could also lead to a change. Um, so we decided to use different uh, strategies like consciousness raising groups that were for instance formed in the 60s and 70s where women would share their experiences and it, this led to uh, the second wave feminism or we are using um, inspiration from uh, different groups, forming groups or somatic approaches, artist visionary approaches and for instance, LARP games. Um, but is it, it, is, it is a film as well. So basically on the film level, it follows a, a personal story of Eliana. Um, who is my age and I met her at a point of her life where I was basically uh, after the burnout and uh, the film follows her journey when she decided to quit her corporate job uh, that she had since she was young adult and, um, and address this like experience of burnout and, and go on the, the journey of healing herself also in this collective. So she will be in the film going through through these activities that we that we researched in the film and that we are gonna um yeah like work on together with the artists that are involved um yeah so hopefully at the end of the end it comes to the conclusion with others that it's not our fault so i'll give the word back to Machino. Um, thank you very much, Paola. Uh, now I would like to share a presentation uh, and uh, tell you more about our impact campaign, actually. Uh, but I have a problem with sharing my presentation, uh, which is bad because it's nice, I would say. Um, uh, I'm trying to maybe, is there somebody uh, from technical staff? Uh, or, um, Michal, can you help uh, uh, Mate to share the, his... Like I, I I I see like uh, uh, like to start share, but when I when I try it, uh, I have problem with the like. Uh, try it now, please. Okay, okay I'm trying now. Uh, yeah, and I have this open system preferences, so this is my internal problem. I would say right. Uh, maybe maybe mail it to the technician that he can play it. Sometimes it you have to yeah, yeah. a host. I don't know. Oh. I, I, I can do it. Okay. Yeah, that is a good idea. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I will mail it to you, Michal. Is it okay? Uh, everybody uh, have allowed, allowed uh, share screen. Okay, that, but the, probably Mate has something with his uh, settings. I have something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it will took me. Yeah, it's um, Paola. Can I send it to you maybe? It could be. Uh, well, for sure, but um, like to the mail, I'm sending it now. Uh, it will be there in the minute, so I can start and maybe you can start uh, already. And I yeah, just yeah. okay. Here. So I uh, you can send it to the chat. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm not sure if I can. <laughs> okay, I said I uh, send it to Paula, and I I, I, I will start. Uh, yeah, uh, so through the, through, through the workshop, we uh, uh, we realized even more and even more specifically that we are working on the, on the documentary film that is political and it contains delicate societal statement. Mental health is a political topic and we are making film about mental health. Firstly, we are counting on the fact that with such a topic can many of us relate. Anxiety is a public secret. This is our logline and also what we want to uncover with our film and the impact campaign. So basically, umbrella idea is to talk about anxiety in connection with uh, burnout, that is core phenomena in our film. We are making political film, but we are not activists and our story and artistic approach is kind of subtle. So very important for us is to find the right balance with the campaigning, because we don't want to create wrong expectations with the spectators. But on the other hand, campaigns should be effective also for those who didn't watch the film for some reason, and it should start the certain thinking in their minds. From this point of view, we want to create impact campaign, which will include two main levels. First level is impact on individuals, somebody who will attend the screening, watch the film and be touched. We don't want to lose these individuals and we want to address them later through different mediums. We want to address individual people that have or had problem with burnout but didn't solve it or didn't even think about uh, uh, how bad is actually happening to them. We imagine our film as a part of multidisciplinary project that embraces various mediums, such as gallery installation, publication, or interactive website, when they can find more about the context of uh, unique and radical techniques that they can see in the film. We are not saying much about the context of those techniques in the film, but on such a website, they will find more about, for example, historical context, how these activities uh, brought certain uh, social change in the past, and also uh, where, they can, where they can find such activities, who they can address, etc. This is very important. Uh, we want to link them to the interesting, accessible facts, informations, and maybe even contacts. For sure, everything will be communicated with the same title and with few loglines. For example, we want to raise courage, courage to love, to find courage to be yourself in the system, uh, or maybe uh, even quit a job and take a proper time to heal. Also, we want to integrate experts in international environment as a topic holders. Some of them are already integrated in the process of filmmaking to do talks, discussions, participative workshops, or maybe also example of the same techniques as they can see in the film. And uh, Paola now will very shortly maybe tell you more about this. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry I tried to share my screen, but I, I had probably the same uh, problem, so I sent it to Michal now. Um, yeah, we decided to collaborate with artists and activists. Um, to also cre create this kind of activities uh, for the group sessions, but also facilitate them and basically share their knowledge and their practices with us. Um, so we're gonna collaborate with Czech artist Barbara Kleinhamplova, who is working with the topics of um, anxious society and uh, critique of, um, of this uh, in her practice for many years. And she's also the founder of Artist Institution Institute of Anxiety, uh, which is also researching different approaches. We're gonna work with Berlin-based artist Susan Poets, who is a somatic practitioner, but also a LARP game designer. So she designs live action role plays. Um, and we're gonna also work with Teresa Silon, who is a queer activist and somatic practitioner as well, and a performer. Um, and yeah, that's for now introduction of the people. Okay, uh, thank you, Paula. And I, I will finish with the, with the second uh, level of, uh, of our impact campaign. Uh, other level is, our idea is based on our logline, anxiety is public secret. We want to uncover the secrets through the film itself and also through the partnership with particular initiatives such as Mental Health League, League Slovakia or Xebe.sk. And we are very thankful that this platform connects us actually. Uh, in this level, we want to address more wider audience because we want to articulate uh, alarming si situation with mental health. Because these days we are experiencing also pandemic of depression. 
that is wide problem in connection with the suicides around the globe. We want to address nonprofit sector and particular foundations. Some research we already did and workshops uh, helped us to find more players in this field such as Orange Foundation, ePechco or Akobook.sk. The map of these subjects will be accessible on the website as well. For example, Slovak government has issues uh, of mental health in the priorities in actual programs, so we want to address also politicians through the discourse that we want to start in the opinion forming media with the diverse range of texts, interviews with experts, analyzes or campaign video content. Complementary level of these mentioned levels is for sure crowdfunding campaign that can bring some more money for our project and its campaign also uh, bring more people interested in. On this, uh, on this we will cooperate um, uh, with those right influencers that have authentic content and engaged followers. To all these elements, we want to integrate our co-production partners from Czech Republic and Germany and also uh, Radio and Television Slovakia. And with all these partners and with all these elements, we want to create an international community around our film. So that was basically uh, what we thought about this these days. Uh, thank you again for this and uh, for your attention. Thank you, Matej and Pavla. So you are not going to show the presentation anymore. I can uh, show it from my computer if you want. Or did you say everything already and you don't need it anymore? No, it was like, uh, yeah, it was like, uh, I hope that uh, uh, you saw already the, the teaser and maybe read synopsis. Uh, yeah, because yeah. Uh, it was, uh, it was um, part of the first pitch, uh, like we present our teaser. Mm -hmm. So I can, uh, I can send you uh, it again with the presentation and the teaser if you would like to have it. So I, I will do it now. Okay, thank you. Maybe the jury members, you can ask uh, one or two questions if, if you want to now, if something is not clear. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it's a shame we, we did not see the presentation um, uh, uh, for that reason. And are you um, thinking this as, as very, very local or you think it also more internationally? Uh, yeah. Uh... Thank you for the question. Uh, I mean, this is the situation in, is different in uh, each country, but uh, quite similar in a way also. So we want to we want to uh, research and scout those initiatives in the particular countries in each country. Uh, but basically, we want to like effectively transfer to each country, uh, but with uh, with uh, specifics. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's different in Germany, like, um, for example, uh, it would be um, rather uh, uh, harder for us to, to find uh, those um, uh, individuals or those initiatives in Slovakia who uh, actually worked with uh, such, um, such activities, but uh, that's what we need to do. Yeah, I only mentioned because you you talk about also about a Berlin artist, right? I got that right, so that's already makes it more international. Okay, great. Yeah, it would I would be happy to see the presentation still though. But if, if maybe you can send it in the chat or in the mail, I don't know. Yeah, I, I will do it like now. Maybe cool. send it to that email conversation where you got also the link from me. Okay, so okay. That can can have it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Matej. And I think let's move to the second project. And can, I would like and can, to... And can, ah, sorry, Susanna, can I have one question, sorry, of course, please? Of course, go for it, Susanna. I, I find it in, important for, for, my, for myself. So I would love to hear Paula and Matej. Um, my, my question is like, if, if you guys have a specific target audience, uh, that you would that, that you would like, like to focus to, you already mentioned uh, the local and international. And you also mentioned that that the situation in particular countries might be so different that uh, that the actors chosen and and the techniques chosen might really determine how accessible the messaging will be for audiences in special countries. And it seems to me, from what you described, that it's uh, more urban, more targeted to uh, younger creative industry uh, professionals. So how would you like to approach this? And, uh, and, and sorry, maybe I missed it, but I am, uh, it's not totally clear to me yet. What is your goal? What you would like to achieve? 
if it's only raising awareness and making people realize that they might be facing a certain wider phenomenon uh, or what would be what would be the impact you are seeking and how are you going to measure it if there is any way to do so mm -hmm. thanks and i would like to answer at least the first uh, part of the question um and it this has been um like we discussed it a lot in the research phase as well and um i was very interested in like the Czechoslovakian context of the film, but then since I live in Berlin, I decided, okay, this is the environment that I know, but it's also a very multicultural environment. So it helps us to bring perspectives of different people. And for instance, the also Eliana is um, a migrant. So she's, she is half German, half Argentinian, the community where she's around. Uh, also uh, some of the protagonists that we filmed with uh, has a migrant background, struggle with bureaucracy a lot, or is a single mother, a uh, black person. So like during, through these different perspectives, we want to bring the topics of, um, um, yeah, sort of like the wider spectrum of the triggers and the topics that people struggle with. Um, of course, it would be different film if it would have been um, taking place in a in a country, for instance, with a post-colonial history or like the then completely different, like I would say like much wider spectrums to look at, but we decided to, to go for this um, sort of like the, the generic Middle Western Central Europe capitalist society that includes these different stories of people. Um, so yeah, I'm also bringing my story of like being Eastern European. So it's like a lot of uh, these mixtures that will be actually mirrored in the sessions and the stories will be yeah taken into account for sure. Thank you, Paula. Maybe I will respond to other question that on the uh, in, in terms of the first level of the impact campaign, uh, the, the sort of individual level, we want to uh, actually uh, integrate as many individuals uh, to not only watch the film, but also to be part of these uh, activities as workshops, discussions, talks and so on. Uh, and uh, to 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 have or uh, to have also some feedback from them. Uh, yeah, so so this is one of goals, and uh, for example, uh, another goal from the second level, more more politics, or how to how to how to say, is that we actually really want to do certain maybe push on the government to actually to actually consider this priority in the program as as a priority. Uh, so uh, through the through the through the mainly, I would say. Uh, uh, media discourse we, or discourse in media we we we, we want to we want to uh, uh, do this yeah mm. thank you is it enough for you zuska there's an answer i don't want to stall uh, at, at the, the moment the flow. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah the thing is that we are running running uh, slightly out of time uh, but i understand that we could talk a lot more about the topic so uh please roman pivovarnik uh, can you can you now introduce your project and your director and your impact campaign uh, hello everyone Ooh, the sound is really uh well you have some kind of echo we don't hear you well or too well hello hello is it so bad i think it's a little bit better but it's very loud and it has an echo or something. Okay. I'll try like this now. It's better a little mm -hmm. bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I changed the. Now no, it's good. It's good now. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah. Once again, hello everyone. I hope you can uh, already hear me. Uh, yeah. I would just uh, like to a little bit introduce myself. My name is Roman Piovarnik. I'm the executive producer of the project called After Us: The Flood. And I'm very happy uh, that uh, today the director of the project, uh, Dorota Bonella, is here with me. And I would uh, let her speak a little bit more about the, um, the motivation and the project itself. Okay, hello, everybody. Um, also, thanks for uh, letting us be here. 
Um, I will just very briefly recap the basic info about the film, as I believe uh, Roman, uh, Roman already did so yesterday or the day before. Um, so I'll just um, tell you about uh, like why we decided to make this film. And um, we decided to make this film, um, this short documentary about global change as, um, as a response uh, to the absence of the team, of this team in our local audiovisual industry. And um, as climate change is the, is the theme we should, in, in my opinion, all, all focus on and learn more about. Um, I believe it is our responsibility in a way um, as filmmakers to incorporate it into our films. And in this case, we want to make um, quite straightforward documentary, uh, however, with slightly artistic undertone. Um, uh, and we focus on Slovak region and Slovak uh, viewer. However, um, I believe the message and the stories uh, of our protagonists uh, is universal. And we have been discussing for quite a long time how to how the structure and the message of this film uh, should evolve, how to motivate uh, people to be open to the theme of uh, global changes and how to um, make them participate in the change. And basically how to change the way we think today or uh, how to stimulate social imagination of uh, what the future might look like. And um, in, the follow, uh, in, the, in the film, we follow uh, uh, four protagonists. Uh, it's, uh, there's one speleologist, one psychotherapist, one farmer and uh, one climatologist. And as you can see, we try to cover multiple approaches uh, to this team and as well as to understand uh, how our psyche works in confrontation with uh, such unpleasant, uh, unpleasant uh, visions of, uh, of the future. And um, the we, we've already had just uh, two days of filming um, with about three more uh, to follow. And we can show you very short teaser of, uh, of what we've already shot and how the mood of the film might uh, look like. And maybe this is what, uh, where Roman can, uh, can uh, show you the teaser and then uh, tell you more about the uh, the productional um, uh, plan. Is it okay? Thank you. Yeah, let, let's watch the teaser. We are curious about it. I'm going to share the screen. And I hope it will be shared so with the sound. But if there will be any problem, just tell me. the screen and so I am playing with it. Uh, yes, so 
since uh, for the last two days we have been talking about um, uh, the impact, then let me continue with the with the change that we plan to make uh, with our film. So our main goal with the film is to bring the climate change closer to us, both on a physical and mental level. Uh, so we want to raise awareness uh, about the situation that is already going on in Slovakia regarding climate change and also the situation that will be in, uh, in Slovakia in, in the near future. Uh, that's why we would really like to reach uh, as broad audience as possible. And we want to do this, uh, do this uh, primarily through TV broadcasting uh, by the public broadcaster and uh, through the online streaming of the film. These two uh, main ways of distribution should be also strongly supported by the PR activities managed by the professional PR agency, uh, including all the uh, common ways of uh, PR activities like media, press, and so on. But also, uh, we would like to uh, involve some uh, associations, let's say, about the, or related to the agri agriculture, or also uh, like hiking clubs or different kinds of interest groups that might be interested you know, in the film. Uh, except of these two main ways of distribution, we would also then like to continue with various, we would like to offer the, the film to, to various uh, events and festivals where the film could be stream, uh, screened together with a discussion after the, after the screening. Now, uh, so in that sense, like we really want to uh, uh, share the film uh, to as many people as possible. And with this distribution, we would uh, also, uh, our like, distribution uh, should be also supported uh, by our partners, or we would, would like to involve another partners to our distribution. One of the main ones is our co-producer uh, regional association uh, for nature conservation uh, for the Bratislava region. Uh, so that, so that uh, they can use the film, their activities and to share it through their channels. But then also like based on the yesterday's talk with Lukas Oswald, for example, we would like to cooperate with people in need NGO and to distribute the film to, to the uh, NGO's network of high schools. Now, then also we would like to start the cooperation with other uh, organizations that are interested in the topic, like the Greenpeace, uh, Worried Mothers, but also the Climate Coalition that uh, actually groups uh, 15 organizations uh, that are uh, dealing with the climate change. With this, we are already like getting a uh, little bit to the impact campaign that we are planning, uh, which means that uh, uh, for the impact campaign, we want to work with these partners. And uh, on the one hand, we would like to help our distribution uh, through these partners, but other way around, we want to uh, get informed quite uh, early about their plans uh, and activities uh, regarding climate change that will, that will happen in the time of publishing. So it means like if there will be some petition going on or, or some uh, legislation will be uh, in the like the change of the law will be in the parliament or anything else, we would like to also in that way maybe navigate the viewers um, to act and to, to get involved more than just than just by watching the, the film. Um, we decided to do it like that because we think like we are, uh, we should do what we are good at. And it means like we want to distribute the film uh, uh, to as many people as possible. And the impact that is uh, related to the film, we would like to do with our partners and like rely on their professional approach and their networks and uh, their activities that they are already doing in the topic. 
And uh, maybe um, last but not least, uh, as you could already see in the short teaser, the Jemenovska ice cave is uh, melting, and in a few decades there will be there will be no ice cave anymore. And actually today I I just uh, decided that uh, uh, together with our pro protagonist uh, Pavel Herik, we would like to change the way that the guy that the tours are guided in the ice cave, because now there is really little talk. Uh, about the relation between the melting and the climate change itself during the, the tour, guided tours in the cave. And, I, and we think like it's really important to show the people that come to the to ice cave that there is like really uh, the real visible evidence of the climate change happening in Slovakia. And with this change of the guided tours, uh, we can reach 100,000 people that come to, to the ice cave every year. And uh, we could use this evidence to, to these people. So that's some activity that we directly want to do and do our best to change. change. So that's all for, for, for our projects. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Roman. Let's have a short round of questions if there are needed. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Oh, you go, you go, Susan. I was first. You go. I come after. No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I was just had a few questions uh, to, to get the, the film right. Um, you talk about four protagonists and how long are you thinking the film will be? How many minutes, if you say short? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, it's 26 to 30, so it's a very short, um, a short uh, time. But we take it as advantage in a way that, uh, you know, you can um, stimulate um, something uh, in this short um, short time and then the viewer can can you know find more information or in-depth information online or through other sources we can really direct him to okay and and what we saw in the teaser and then uh, uh it was only images are you planning to do interviews for over or something the like or are you only or only going to show uh, let's say four portraits of them and it's for us as the public to to make them understand and you motivate us one other way to go to a platform to learn more am i understanding that correctly yeah if i understand the question correctly like uh, we we will show fragments of their lives of their yeah. uh views of their philosophy and then, uh, you know, direct the viewer to, uh, we are thinking about maybe a platform, a web, uh, online platform where uh, he or she uh, can find more information about the topic. And, and but we hear them talking about what they what their philosophy yeah, course, is. Yeah, yes, well, that's yes. not you just like I'm just yes, showing, I'm just yes. curious. And okay. Yeah. And as one of, uh, of uh, them is climatologist, he will provide the, you know, the, the basic info um, and the scenario Slovakia will be in, in let's say, two, two decades. So. Okay. Okay. Clip. Zuzka. Yeah, thank you, Elka. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, in those 26 minutes, what is your goal to to bring the visual kind of shock to the viewers, how close the climate change is to us and to, to stimulate their own responsibility or you are you are going to touch upon the solutions as well or that's, that's beyond the, the goal of the, the documentary. And the second question is like, uh, Roman, you very nicely elaborated on partners and the logical coalitions that could help you with the, with the film. And you, you kind of said that you rely on their activities. So what is, what is actually your ultimate goal with the impact to, to, to provide this shocking evidence that would be so strong that when the viewer sees that, that they immediately kind of respond and, and you hope that, that by giving this material to the coalitions, they will be able to, 
motivate people to get involved much more or what what is the the what is the hope what what is the ultimate result that you are hoping for um so can i uh, answer the first part and then roman will take the second is that is that okay uh so the question was like uh how are we planning to motivate uh, the people right no what is no, what is your focus is is it on the showing the strong evidence of the climate mm -hmm. change and how close it is to us or do you want to also elaborate on the solutions that we need or you just want to provide visual evidence yeah well uh, that's what we've been think thinking about a lot uh, and we've uh, decided that uh, at the end there has to be also uh, some kind of hope and solution um, not to uh, put the viewer to complete uh, depression and despair. Um, however, there has to be a moment of shock as well. Um, and we also like try to, um, like we don't want to only depress the, the viewer. We also want to tell, 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 tell them that it's normal to, um, to not, not, um, not, take in all the information uh, the media is already giving us and that it's really um, normal that our psyche just doesn't want to allow this um, horror um, scenarios of the future. So we want to just explain that uh, you don't have to feel bad if you are not taking action right now and we all have been or are in this phase or will be in this phase and um, we want to um, um, give some um, some uh, ways how a person can participate in the change i hope i i answered the question if not just tell me <laughs> Maybe Roman, you can take the second part. I'll yeah, try to answer. Uh, yeah, our main goal is to, uh, as I said, like to raise the awareness uh, about the topic. And uh, like with the film, we want to primarily raise the awareness. Mm -hmm. and then, like in, uh, in cooperation with all the partners, we want uh, to offer them the film so that they can use it to. Uh, to all the kind or to all the different kinds of their activities to raise the awareness but then like uh, uh, we hope like the what we ultimately hope to that the once the awareness is raised and the people are maybe a little bit uh, more willing to, to act or, or to do something then we would like also either on our side but also primarily through the partners uh, to navigate the people, the viewers, what can they do at the time? And but it, I think it will happen. Uh, it will depend a lot on what the situation will be right uh, at the time, like in April 2022. If there will be some petition going on, or or if there will be some, I don't know, strike going on, or or it depends a lot what will be going on at the time, and that's why we want to start talking to them quite early so we can uh, prepare for and, and join forces at the time of the publishing of the film. And also, I just hope like, I answered it uh, properly. If not, just let me know. Thank you, Roman. Uh, maybe Alexandra still didn't have a chance to, to ask anything also in previous, uh, with previous team. So Sashi, would you like to ask something? No, Evie, thank you. I already spoke to all of the guys. So it's, I mean, nothing that I would like to add. So, but thank you for, for the opportunity, but we already discussed what I just was, I mean, curious about. So thank you. Thank you. So let's go to the third project as anyways, we are quite late. But I think it's important to, to ask questions also and get answers. So, Michal, the floor is yours. Thank you. And uh, do you hear me in a way? 
Yeah, very well. Okay, great. Because I'm in the car, unfortunately. Uh, it happened like that that I'm traveling, taking bus every three time. Uh, okay, so I send it uh, my text presentation to the uh, to the chat. So if you would like to go with me, you can, or you can just listen to uh, what I will say. Okay, so for the beginning, I would like to thank everybody for uh, creating this opportunity. We lost your picture. Us. If this is not a part of your presentation, we are seeing some uh, uh, other guy on the... No, okay, it's you again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I when I will when I'm going to Google the talk where I have a presentation, then it will switch off the, the picture. So probably there will be other guy. But the no, no problem. Okay, so so thank you very much again uh, for creating this uh, program. It was so helpful for me. Every every each uh, every each. Uh, Talk yesterday was so helpful, and I have so many notes, uh, which I will uh, process for next few days and weeks. Uh, so I will try to say what I put together uh, about the campaign. Uh, so uh, our goal with the movie and with the campaign is to empower people to find creative paths to face climate and social issues through support support platform. Great idea of making climate workshop from Secure Climate Workshop example in our, in your own community. Audience: uh, first, cultural creatives; second, people who are looking for something more, looking for being part of the change, <clears throat> but need a network, a community of like-minded people to be in contact with. Uh, topic: Climate and social crisis is our mirror, where we can decide what future we want to create. Will there will be more division, conflict between people, people in the nature, or will we find a way how to co-create more just society for us and for all life on Earth? Uh, so campaign, campaign um, I see campaign uh, in like uh, two different pillars. One is offline campaign, the second one is online campaign. So in offline campaign, uh, I would like to travel to at least five different places, uh, through the Slovakia. Uh, Mainly, I will try to focus on not bigger cities in Slovakia, but uh, try to find the support for the topic like this in more rural areas, smaller towns or communities. Uh, we will organize an event with screening the movie, and besides the screening of the movie, there will be discussion and uh, also music concert of uh, our friend who uh, making a movie uh, for our film. Uh, on the event, uh, we can focus on social and environmental issues of the region or place where the event is held. So we will not only just discuss the ideas, uh, like concrete, concretely how our ideas was uh, presented in the movie, but we will try to uh, use this floor about the screening of the movie, about environmental and social justice uh, to uh, connect with uh, the real issues and problems of the region where the screening will be held and will be held. That's uh, one way. Uh, this is more like a longer checklist right now. So in the uh, next few weeks, I will probably erase a lot from, from this list. But right now, there, there I see more opportunities still. Uh, second one is uh, that we can talk about how to build local food, co food cooperatives, food banks, or reuse places. Or we can focus on personal change in terms of how we spend money, what we are supporting with money, how we can cooperate with nature, plant, uh, plant on food, etc. Online campaign. In online campaign, we will encourage people to take a part in change by creating his or her own climate plan in our platform, Compass of Regeneration. Uh, Compass of Regeneration is uh, a platform which we are building for one year already. It, uh, it will be online uh, before the movie will be uh, finished. Uh, so uh, this platform will be a place where people will find additional information about the movie and movie protagonists and main ideas from the movie. Uh, it will uh, serve as a green uh, Wikipedia place where guides, articles, interviews will be stored about various examples of regenerative practices. Uh, guide to create climate action plan with different level of commitment. Educational platform hub for cooperation. Uh, for spreading the message out, 
uh, I would like to use my network of contacts, which I have for many years in climate and social justice and personal development movement. And I plan to make also a crowdfunding campaign to raise money to finish the movie, which will serve as well as part of the impact campaign. Okay, so I'm back. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, in this presentation, I focused on the campaign itself. I didn't uh, talk a lot about the kind of main ideas of the movie. Also, I don't know if I should mention that too. Or, yeah. What about Jury? Would you like to hear more about it? Or do you rather go for your questions? Sorry, if I can you repeat the question? I didn't hear it properly. Michal, can you can you repeat the question? Yes, that in the presentation I, I focused on the campaign itself, not that much about the uh, main ideas in the movie. So my question is if I should uh, explain a little bit uh, shortly the main idea in the movie or uh, we can only discuss the campaign. Maybe really short resume is fine. All right. Okay, so uh, it's like probably two, two main uh, ideas which are described in the movie. Uh, one idea is about our perception uh, through which we see the world. And, uh, and that's, uh, and we're exploring the idea that this perception has uh, really a lot to do with uh, the unjust society and uh, with uh, our, mm, that we doing this negative impact to the earth. And it's about our perception which uh, was emphasized uh, 500 years ago in Cartesian uh, revolution, where the duality and uh, mind uh, was uh, said that it's nothing, uh, that is not, uh, that only material world is real. And so we, we see right now the society which is uh, slightly bended to uh, outside development, not inside development, to patriarchal system, not uh, uh, balance between men and female uh, kind of psychology or energy in a society. So we go in a little bit deeply to explore uh, this topic of uh, our, uh, and uh, sorry for my English right now, I, I'm losing one word, but uh, that, that we are looking on the reality through a small lens and we supposed to wider this lens to see more. And uh, that's, the, that's the main idea. And the second one is uh, encourage people to uh, find the hope in this situation where uh, uh, the climate crisis and other crises are for us. Uh, the crisis is here to, uh, we, can make, uh, we can make change from the crisis if we decide to. Yeah. So we are exploring the, uh, our different a path from the future, like dystopian path or protopian path. If we will uh, find a hope in us, and if we will uh, look for answers, how we can co-create the future, how we can be part of the change, uh, we can uh, do a lot together. So that's it. Thank you, Michal. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and uh, well, one last note that, that the whole material and whole film was uh, actually uh, 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 captured on the climate workshops. So we just uh, recorded everything what was happening there and from, from the stories of the real people uh, who, who went through this process, uh, we created this to inspire others. Thank you. So I think let, let's ask questions, if, if the jury have any questions. Yeah, if I may ask, I, I, I realized that uh, I have a question for all three teams, uh, which just came out, uh, came up uh, with me, uh, is if they see any serious risks uh, to, re to realizing their projects in terms of finances, Michal, Michal mentioned that, uh, that, that they are planning a crowdfunding campaign, if there are any serious risks for the projects to be seen. If we should measure impact, uh, I think it's important for us to know um, if, if you know there are any barriers for, for any of these projects to, to come into life, 
if we should award uh, uh, a prize for, for that. Uh, and the second question to Michal is, uh, I find it very intriguing and inspirational that, that you want to address the personal responsibility, although there is uh, quite a debate about how far the personal responsibility can, can actually change the situation. And if we on the global scale don't need a much more collective push elsewhere. Uh, so so this, is, this is my question, like uh, if, if you have any experts or wider range of expertise within the film, uh, and if, if, the, if you addressed a, a risk of maybe creating false hopes or expectation or deep and depression of people, if they find out that it's not working and they would dedicate you know, so much energy uh, for, for this uh, agenda or goal. Thanks a lot. Okay, so I, I will start and I will leave the uh, stage for others after that. Uh, and I will try to uh, answer both questions. I will start with the second one. Yeah, uh, we, we have in the movie many experts uh, on the psychology, on the philosophy, on the yeah, and, uh, permaculture, uh, communities, community development. Uh, and uh, one of the quotes, uh, which uh, will probably at the end of the movie, is where um, the therapist, which we interviewed for the movie, uh, she's saying that recently uh, many people start to come to her with this uh, climate uh, initiative yeah? and, uh, and climate depression from what is happening with the environment. And she's saying uh, on the camera that, uh, that she realized after a longer time of uh, therapies with these people that the uh, only way is to find a way how to uh, uh, find a way how to uh, find a solution for climate cri for climate crisis, not to treat people who are frustrating from it. Yeah. So the 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 idea is to uh, to show to the people that they can take a part in a change, that they can really uh, feel that they uh, yeah that they they are the change. But of course, some, something we can do, something we cannot do. Yeah, so first thing is, uh, for me, the, it's really important to, to start with yourself. But after that, to really uh, doing cooperatives, for example, or find a network of like-minded people. And then to uh, speak in your neighborhood, with, for example, with principle. Yeah, for, yeah, to take, uh, to... Uh, be responsible for, for example, issues in your local town. But uh, uh, I'm not saying uh, I, I exactly understand this. this uh, I heard it a lot of times, this debate. And for me, it's not that uh, we shouldn't uh, speak about personal change and, and, uh, and just to find, find a way how to uh, convince uh, big businesses or, or policymakers to change. But it's both ways. We need to do it in every level. So yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my answer. And uh, first question about the money. Uh, yeah, there is uh, there is of of course the uh, money. It's yeah, it's kind of not, not very easy all the time to have enough money for everything what, what we can do. Uh, yes, there could be problems. So that's why I'm I working on this movie already for more than, more than one year and it's only main reason is the money that uh, we don't have enough money to finish it in a kind of uh, quicker way so yeah we'll we'll see if uh, if uh, if um, if I will be lucky and I will try uh, my best money will come that's that's how I, I see it thanks any other questions on Michal can I ask, how long will the film be in the end? Where you estimate on? Maximally, uh, like it was also previously said, like 25 minutes, maximally, maybe less. And how many people will we see? Because you, you collect all the all the material at the fun, from the climate workshops and so on. How do you see that in the edit? Uh, what do you mean? I don't understand. 
how many how many people will in the end of the in the end of the day because you'll be the editing how many will there be do you think in this three to five minutes well in this because you collect all the material and then you i know edit. i know i know i know uh yeah that will that's not already answered uh, this question uh we will find a balance you know between uh to take proper time to introduce the character and to give an uh, overview about the workshop of workshop about the topic uh, i hope so that maximally 10 people we'll see i don't know i don't know yet because we are not finished with editing process okay thank you thank you, if, thank uh, you. if alexandra doesn't have uh, any question on michael if it's the same case as with the previous projects it is, I, it is definitely thank you Evie. so i think we should move to the next part of uh, this session because we are already getting late paula paula would you like to say something uh, yeah i just wanted to answer zana's question about the finances which i thought was aimed for all the projects um is it is it correct <laughs> can i can i answer that as well yeah yeah sure uh, cool um, yeah, uh, since Maci is not here anymore, but I'm, I'm, we work very closely on the production and the funding. So uh, we had been financed by the Slovak Audiovisual Fund for the production phase. And at the moment we are waiting for, uh, for the development phase, I'm sorry. At the moment we are waiting for the production grant. Um, and for now we are financing it from the public money. So we have a, also have a Czech and German co-producer. Um, and there is uh, one more German co-producer, which is the University of Kunste, where I study at the moment, and they are also entering the production with in-kind, so with the technical equipment. And based on also like the impact campaign and distribution, uh, Maciej is very skilled in basically his uh, professional background is the film distribution of uh, in sense of expanded cinema. So this is what he's been doing with uh, all the films that they distribute. That they create a tailored campaigns with discussions or with installations. So there, I think there is a potential to finance it also by a different um, spectrum. So, yeah, so I wanted to say this. Maybe I should also un un answer the same question. Uh, like regarding the financing uh, now, it's uh, the, the film is financed uh, by our co-producer Brawl, which is a regional Creation, nature conservation uh, from one bigger beer uh, grant. And uh, now we are just waiting for the final, final verdict from our public broadcaster, Radio and uh, about the possibility of co production. And so this is also like now the major risk that they will not uh, support us. But so far, like uh, on every level, it was. Or confirmed in a dramaturgy and all these other stages, but now they're just waiting for the final verdict, and we hope that everything goes fine. Ah, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, so uh, when if if the public broadcaster we, we do, uh, get on board, then we will have. Uh, production completely financed and regarding the campaign uh, we don't have the money yet but we plan to raise the money and uh, in different sources as well with the crowdfunding uh, audiovisual fund uh, for the distribution phase and then we are just thinking about other maybe private partners but then at first we all have to like um, set the budget and then we'll see like uh, much we have to raise, but but we we already have the plan to raise the money. Thank you, Roman. So now, unfortunately, I think we really must go to to another phase of the session because we are already 15 minutes after the schedule. So uh, I would like to welcome Annika Hönig with us from a German company Batteries. Uh, Batteries actually brought an award to this competition. So it's somebody is also winning a, a real award at the end of this pitching. But uh, Annika will tell us more about what batteries are and what they are for and how you can use them as, as filmmakers. 
But uh, now at this moment, I would like to ask Michal, our technician, to move our jury to another room so they can discuss the projects and they, they can decide who okay. will win this award. So I still see the jury here. Suska Vink is still here. Yeah, we are still I, here. Mm -hmm. Michal. Yeah, I'm joining the room. So I, I think Annika, uh, you can you can start. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Welcome. <laughs> so hello from Berlin as well, actually. So um, we are a startup um, uh, that uh, was founded in 2018 already. And um, it's perfect sort of topic wise because our startup was founded to also um, uh, fight climate change. And uh, we are a social impact startup. Um, so we not just only want to avert CO2 emissions um, to um, address climate change, but um, impact for us comes on a lot of uh, different dimensions. So um, we basically are here to also fight poverty in uh, developing countries um, because there are a lot of people who ac uh, actually suffer from um, not having access to um, energy overall, um, leave alone clean energy um, as such as well. I do have a short um, slide deck for you. Um, I will see if I can just share that with you real quickly or if I end up having the same challenges like you have. So one second. Oh, okay, it's saying I just need to uh, quickly um, adopt my um, desktop here one sec. Do you need any help? No, I just need to, um, it's so funny. Patience, every, patience, okay. <laughs> every um, uh, collaboration platform these days has different requirements on the settings. Um, so when you try and share content, um, it looks like uh, it's um, asking for additional stuff here, but I should have that in a second. I think that should have solved it. Let me see. No, it did not. Okay, super. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe do you want to send it to us in the chat and I can try to share it or Michal will try to share it? Yes, absolutely. Um, that sounds good. Um, so I'll do that just now and I pop it in there. <clears throat> it's uploading already. Great, it's almost there. So um, I'll, I'll uh, keep us moving because um, of the timing issue and then um, I can tell you um, uh, at which side I will be. Um, but basically um, what we do at Batteries is, um, so we're trying to provide um, batteries as the name says um, for um, different use cases. And um, what uh, is so special about our batteries is, is that they actually fully sustainable um, and um, that they rely on circularity principles because what we do is we upcycle batteries and they come out of electric cars. And um, you might think that this is something that's very far in the future um, because um, e-mobility is really just starting to take off. But um, um, what it's, 
thank you so much um, for, for sharing it, yes. Um, uh, and what we are basically saying is that um, in a couple of years, so starting from 2025, really up to 2030, there is going to be a tsunami, literally, of um, used batteries um, from electric vehicles. And um, the problem with that is, um, if you go just to the next slide, I'm still on uh, slide two um, there, um, we basically have the problem that these batteries are actually really still very good. So um, electric cars basically, um, um, I shared a PDF so you can just click on page two there and I think that that should work. Um. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so when the batteries come, when the batteries come out of the cars, um, they still have about eighty percent capacity. So they're really strong batteries still, um, and they are in really big packs, and um, they're really uh, way too valuable to actually to recycle them already. Why are they being taken out of the cars? Because um, for um, either e-mobility, um, customers really care about having a really long range, so they don't want to charge it um, too often um, when they actually drive the car. So they really want. And, um, maximum capacity of the batteries and um, so when they're being taken out of the car they still hold about 70 to 80 percent and that's when we actually take them and we upcycle these batteries by uh, uh, by module at the modular level and we basically build new batteries um, um, out of that again and um, these batteries then are second life batteries and they um can be used for all sorts of purposes. Um, we actually, um, for the filming industry, created um, uh, uh, already a strategic partnership with a German rental um, company that rents out equipment um, to, uh, to the um, different film producers and um, uh, companies and so on. And um, what's really special about them is that they, the picture that you can see here, actually it allows you to replace um, small diesel generators, which um, obviously um, is, uh, is a big problem in the filming industry because the CO2 footprint, uh, as you know, of film productions is very high anyways. And in um, a lot of European countries, we actually already see that um, the requirements to receive funding um, um, ask um, for the filmmakers to actually um, comply with a lot of things that um, help reduce the footprint. Um, one is um, that you need to um, provide energy from renewable energy sources, so that can be solar powered. Um, uh, in Germany, it's um, uh, you can buy um, power through the grid, but it has to be um, uh, uh, eco power um, as well, or you can actually also um, charge through um, solar um, power. You need to replace diesel generators and all that um, and so on. So um, what you see here, like I said, is um, the small replacement. Um, what's great about it is it's actually mobile so that um, you can um, take it wherever you are when you are filming. So it's designed for outdoors. It's very easy to connect as well. So these lamps on the picture that you see. Um, this is a, a picture that is taken outside. Obviously for filming, um, the expectation would be that you um, um, also attach LED equipment um, or you can just use it to charge your cameras when you are um, on the go, your mobile phones, depending on what you're filming with and so on. And um, in this partnerships that we have already with the German company, we um, are also developing bigger solutions. So what you can see here is um, two better um, packs, we call them, that um, have a capacity of about um, uh, 4.6 uh, kilowatt hours, which does give you um, already capacity for quite a few hours um, in the day. Um, but we're also building a bigger one that really um, is able to replace a generator. And um, what we are offering um, here as part of the um, uh, festival is um, to actually support the winning team and provide the equipment um, as well. And maybe either we cut it there um, if, uh, if it's not fully working and we're a little behind on time anyways. Yeah, so there you can just see um, how the upcycling works uh, to actually get from a first life to a second life um, uh, as such. Something I didn't mention is that um, our productive life um, for our batteries is then still another seven to 10 years. So it's really long. And then um, what we actually guarantee is that the batteries at the end um, do get properly recycled as well. 
yeah. Here you can just see um, we have a range of batteries. Um, not all of them are necessarily for the filming industry because we're serving uh, multiple industries, um, including also the construction industry, um, also for the developing countries, uh, mini grids and so on. But um, uh, the beta pack, which is pretty much in the middle here is um, the solution you've seen for the generator replacement. We are also connecting our um, batteries to the internet um, so that uh, uh, it's very easy to actually see um, what the CO2 aversion is. So when you actually have to do your CO2 calculations up front um, for showing you know, what your CO2 footprint is, um, when you're um, trying to get funding, you're actually also then able to um, justify it later on. Yeah, this is just showing the uh, connectivity, um, which we do uh, by battery pack level. It goes into uh, the cloud via secure um, uh, data connection. And then um, you can uh, uh, log on to a portal um, to actually measure it, which can be on your desktop or on your mobile phone as well. Yeah, and then here's just a quick summary again on, uh, on green filming and um, what it does. Um, I think I've mentioned literally everything. Um, what's a big advantage as well is um, it makes no noise um, uh, in comparison to a generator. So if you're filming outside and you have requirements because you're in a nature reservoir or you're filming, you know, in, in urban environments where you have noise restrictions when you're filming at night and so on, this is perfect um, for that as well because it literally has zero uh, noise uh, as such. Thank you. And that's it. <laughs> Probably we'll just wait for you to come back um, uh, as well. Yeah, probably. Maybe if there's some time, can I ask you I have a question? Absolutely, go for it. Yeah, uh, because then I understood like after after the after these ten years, they are then recycled. And uh, so, I, so I guess it's like dismantled completely. And what's happening with the with the material then? Like, are yeah, what, what's what's happening with the material afterwards? No, good question. So um, uh, it's actually sort of you've reached two points of um, of recycling. So the first one is when we actually already by module um, take it from the cars um, and basically strip it down. There's already a little bit of waste there that um, we um, have to um, part of it. We are actually able to use besides the battery. Some parts have to uh, go into recycling companies at this point already. So we have recycling partners. And then when you're at the complete end, you also um, we also work with recycling partners who do the complete recycling. Um, right now, unfortunately, for lithium-ion batteries, um, the recovering rate on raw materials is um, not as high as uh, we all are hoping. Um, but considering that the lifetime for our batteries is still another seven to 10 years, and there's a lot of innovation happening in that space, we really hope that going forward, they can recover a lot more from the raw materials so that they can bring it back to battery producers um, so that they can use it again. And then the other things have to be uh, recycled. Um, um, some of it gets burned, some of it is um, uh, stripped down um, for different chemical processes. So it really depends on the um, uh, materials inside. Uh, do you think like uh, there could be at some point a uh, possibility to like uh, recycle it and create new batteries from, from, the, from the raw materials that there'll be like uh, Complete circle that there wouldn't be, wouldn't have to be like uh, mining of um, raw materials all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great question. And yeah, this is something that we deeply care about as well. So for example, we are currently also looking into using different materials. Um, so when you, you know, you've just seen the sort of housing of the battery, right? And some of it is actually plastic material. And uh, what we're discussing with, um, uh, with a company who are actually recovering waste from oceans um, um, and recycle that, if we can use that as well, obviously a battery um, is, uh, is dangerous goods. So it has to meet certain requirements. 
um, uh, and that's something that you know we are, are elaborating with them. But this is a good example where you know with as many parts of the battery, you're trying to um, see if you can completely keep it in a circular economy. With some elements of um, the battery um, where the technology is right now, that's unfortunately not possible. But with you know extending the lifetime by you know another seven to ten years, this is um, uh, a big big advantage already in uh, in comparison to first life batteries where you just use it for a few years now and then immediately recycle. Eva, can, do I have a time for another question? I, I think they're not back yet, right? No, they're not back, so go for it. <laughs> Unless Eva I'm, has... I'm back at the moment, but I, I think the jury is still struggling with the decision. So uh, we still have some time, like Annika, if, if you still have something to show or if you want to discuss more, there are any more questions, I think. Absolutely, I'm, I'm happy to give it. some time to jury. <laughs> Super. No, absolutely. I think we had another question. So let me see if I have an answer. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask like, if we would like to use them, like if you know what the closest rental place where we can uh, rent them from. Uh, mm -hmm the closest place to Bratislava. Yeah, um, uh, so uh, we actually are just starting to set up, set up our distribution network. We already have a partner in Hungary, actually, um, who uh, is um, also a startup that's um, focusing just on sustainable energy um, uh, as such. And um, with them, we're discussing how they can cover um, countries that are a lot easier uh, to uh, directly cater from their side rather than from Germany. But we're also um, talking to uh, rental companies in Germany, Germany um, one I've already mentioned, say, for example, um, they have six sites in Germany, one in the Czech Republic and so on. So we're really trying to um, make it as accessible as possible. And um, we are starting serious production um, in um, April next year already. So there will be a lot more touch points um, where uh, you can then um, also um, get access to them. So very happy to share that with you and stay connected. <laughs> So, uh, what was the German rental product uh, like company you mentioned? Mm -hmm. It's a Ludwig Kamera Verleih. Okay. Um, they're, um, they're actually uh, they're headquartered in Hamburg, but they um, they also have a subsidiary in uh, in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Perfect.
Hi everyone, what's happening here? It took us some time to decide. I think uh, 15 minutes maybe wasn't really enough for for uh, our jury to decide. They have quite tough discussion. But uh, I hope that uh, you had an interesting presentation of batteries while we were not here. So at the moment, I think I can ask Marche to, to present sure. the decision of the jury. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm obviously honored to do so. And also because it's, I think if I'm right, it's the first time there are impact days uh, over here, uh, which we also have at Movies That Matter. And why, why did we... Took it took it to us a while because it's something new. You have a film, you have an idea, uh, you think of your distribution, where you go, you film to, and then you have impact. And it's actually nearly something else. So we talked about, but what is then the impact of the film? What was that plan? And also who who how will they activate then people for that social change? So that was a, a something we really we really were thinking about. How will it resonate in the Slovak society? That was a, a, a an uh an issue we talked about in, intensively and also um that and um, it's work in progress we all know and it's very good you worked so hard for these two days and um trying to think of um who is my stakeholder who do i need if i want social change etc is it still there how do we motivate people how how can we jump to say it in a dutch style on the bike on the back of a bike of uh of some organization and so on to team up to um to who have the same goal and um if we looked at the three projects they're all very very different had very different ideas about um how to reach the goal we choose for one project actually where we thought it would really um shock maybe motivate and who knows make the people within the slovak society think about what there should be uh changed and in which society they are living now and, and create an awareness of what our planet is doing to us or better what we are doing to the planet so without further ado we give the prize to the second project after us the flood as i understand the cave which is melting is a, an iconic thing for everybody here so it's like from uh from young to old from all different uh corners of so i go to this place and then they see it melting and then with the ideas you're having but we do think you have to really extensively think further about how you do the impact plan uh, we thought that that would resonate quite broadly within the slovak society and for that reason, we want to give them the prize. Not having said that, I think the other two projects um, were very, very strong in their ideas. And um, I hope to see you maybe at Movies That Matter Impact Days or in Geneva Impact Days. Go there, observe, absorb how they um, deal with their impact plans and, um, and, and see you around. So uh, thank you very much. Well done. Thank you very much, Marche. Thank you very much to all the, the jurors for the, these hard discussions and all the inputs. And um, good luck with your project, to the project, to the participants. Uh, congratulations to the winners. Uh, I will put you in touch with Annika so you, you can get your award, actually. And I think you can still keep in touch with all the tutors that you met during the, the workshop so you can uh, deepen your, your impact projects. And I, I, I'm pretty sure it needs more time. It was really tough and very short. So it takes time to, to really think about what really impact is and, uh, and to work on the campaign. I'm, I'm sure it, it's actually impossible to do it in one day. So this was supposed to maybe just challenge your minds and start thinking uh, in, in this way of, of making an, an impact. So thanks to everybody. Uh, we keep in touch, as our motto of the festival says, and have a nice rest of the evening. Bye. I would like thank to you. thank also the jury and, and the trust you put in our project. Thanks a lot. And also, Eva, to you, the organizers, and all the tutors. Thanks a lot. It was very nice. Thank you very much. And I would like to say that uh, 
all like the the other two projects are i think very interesting and uh, i'm looking forward to to see them anywhere somewhere thank you very much and also to the so. tutors. Yeah. me too thank you very much good luck to everybody bye bye bye, bye. We're on our own. Eh? Yeah, Michal, please uh, leave us for a while. So we just have some uh, after discussion. <laughs>